my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. On the day after Martin Luther King Jr. was killed, I decided to do an exercise that would help my students to understand racism. I tried to make a difference. I'm still trying to make that difference. Is there anyone in the United States that we do not treat as our brothers? Yes. Who? Yes. The, black yes. People, yes. the black people. How are black people treated? How are Indians treated? How are people who are of a different color than we are treated? Like they are like part of this place. world. They don't get anything in this world. Why is that? Because they're different colors. I feel people need this because we are still doing now what we were doing in the 50s. Is there anything about you people that is different from one another that we could use to make part of you? Uh, like the eyes, the color of the eyes are. Okay, we could use the color of your eyes. How many in here have blue eyes? Okay, how many in here have brown eyes? It might be interesting to judge people today by the color of their eyes. Would you like to try this? I'm trying to get the people who participate in this exercise the opportunity to find out how it feels to be something other than white in this society. All right, people, I'm Jane Elliott. I'm your resident bitch for the day, and make no mistake about that. That's exactly what this is about. I do this in a mean, nasty way because racism, sexism, ageism, Homophobia, ethnocentrism are mean and nasty. Today, I am here because I have been asked to do an exercise in discrimination based on eye color. Now, the purpose of this exercise is to give these nice, blue-eyed, white kids the opportunity to spend about an hour and a half to two hours on the receiving end of the treatment which we mete out to people of color on a daily basis in this country. They're in a blue-eyed holding room right now. They are not eating, they are not drinking. There are three chairs in there for 12 people. We're going to bring these people in here. You're going to treat them as though they're inferior because they are inferior. Everybody understand that? They're not going to learn because they can't learn and because we're going to set it up so they can't learn. And if they succeed, who has failed? We have. Do you people want to fail? No. If they get power, who loses power? We do. You want to lose power? No, we're going to accuse them of not being as smart as we are. We're going to accuse them as not, of not being as clean as we are. We're going to lower our expectations for them. We're going to force them to live down to our expectations of them. And when they do, we're going to blame their inability to perform on the color of their eyes. Now, in order to get them in their into their adult ego state, we're going to try to teach them the listening skills. Now, what do we call men that we want to keep in their childlike state? Boy. We're going to call these males boy. You're not going to use their given name. You're going to call them boy. Or you're going to call them bluey. Or you're going to call them fool. <laughs> now, people, what do we call women besides chicks? Honey. Baby. Gal. Doll face. Doll. Dumplin'. We are going to give them no respect. How many of you have friends in that group? Let me put it this way. How many of you used to have friends in that group? Because some of these people are going to leave here very angry. White people's number one freedom in the United States of America is the freedom to be totally ignorant about those who are other than white. We don't have to learn about those who are other than white. And our number two freedom is the freedom to deny that we're ignorant. Today, we're going to take away these people's freedom to be ignorant. I want you to understand how the system works. And believe me, this is how the system works. We make laws to support white superiority and to reinforce white superiority. And when you catch on to how it works, then we change the laws. I didn't invent this exercise. I learned this from Adolf Hitler. One of the ways they decided who went into the gas chamber was eye color. This exercise is not without precedent. Okay, now look at this, watch him. Look at him. Should we just sit anywhere? Should we just sit anywhere? 
if you came into a room in which the chairs were arranged in this way and the brown eyed people were sitting in the, these chairs in this way and nobody was sitting in the chairs in the middle, where would you sit? In the middle. That would make sense to me. Would it make sense to you? Where are you going? Get in the blue eyed section. The blue eyed section is in the middle of the room. Get there. You're a non-brown? As far as I'm concerned, you're a bully. Now, is this one giggling? What do you know about him? It's because he's ignorant. What else do you know about him? He's in his little kid, child's ego state, isn't he? Get up here and sit down on the floor. You too, get up here and sit down on the floor. <laughs> I was really tired when I entered the room, but I didn't have any expectations. I was just sitting there and wondering how it could be an emotional experience. On the day these kids, these white kids are in this exercise, they see themselves as other people see them for the first time in their lives. What are you going to do? I'll sit here until you tell me to do something. You see what he's doing? I'm a girl. See what she's doing? It didn't take very long before intimidation set in and uh, before my, my buttons were pushed. Now, while I've been talking, some of you have been sitting there reading the signs. I'm not going to put up with that any longer. So you in the back row, stand up and read the first sign on that wall back there. Only brown eyes need apply. Read it so we can hear you. Only brown eyes need apply. Next. Why well, can't... A blue eye be more like a brown. Read it again. Get it right this time. Why can't a blue eye be more like a brown? Read it again. Get it right this time. Pronounce each one of those words correctly as they're written. Why can't a blue eye be more like a brown? Next. I'm not prejudiced. Some of my best friends are blue eyed. How many of you have ever heard that one before in another form? Oh, yes. Favorite claim of liberals, right? I'm not prejudiced, and my best friends are black. Has any person ever said to you, any good liberal person ever said to you, when I see you, I don't see you black? Every day! <laughs> Every damn day! How many of you have had that experience? When I see you, I don't see you black. And what do you say to them when they say that? But I am. But I am. And then what do they say? They say, but I don't see color. I don't see color. <laughs> How many of you think they do see color? Well, people, if they didn't see color, they wouldn't say, when I see you, I don't see you black, because they wouldn't see black, would they? You can't say, I, you, I don't see color, because then you'd be seeing them black and white. And that would be a really weird world to see. If everything was black and white, we would be some really messed up people. It happens to me on a daily be basis in the institution I'm at, and there's really no way around it, because whether people do it intentionally or not. Do you know the physical aspects of the listening skills? You're afraid not? What about you? Definitely not. Definitely not. What about you? A bit. A bit? Yes. A bit? Yes. Well, tell me what the bit is that you know. Uh, the bit that I know is that you stand up straight, you look at the person who's speaking, and you pay attention to what they're saying. What if you're sitting down? I, I am sitting down. Then you can't listen, right? Well, you can listen by sitting down. Oh, you just said you stand up straight? Said you sit up straight. You did she say you sit up straight or did she say you stand up straight? <laughs> Is this a universal problem with blue eyed people? You have a paper and pencil with you? No. Do you? Over in my bag. Maybe. Over in your bag. Yes. Why is it in your bag? Because that's where I keep it. That's where you keep it. When Why I'm did you put your paper and pencil over there? Because I was not I did not know when I was going to be needing it. You came to a learning experience, right? Yes. Did you ever go to a learning experience before? Yes. Did you ever take notes? Yes. What did you use? I used a paper and pencil. Paper and pencil. And did you keep it with you so that you could take notes? Yes. Yes. Why didn't you do that this time? Because I was not planning on taking notes. You weren't planning on taking notes? You no. think you can remember everything that's going to be done in here and said in here? Not word for word. Not word for word. So what should you have done? I... Probably, she's going to say, I probably should have done it right. What should you have done? I should have brought my paper and pencil over here and kept it with me That's the right. entire time. That's right. You're acting angry. I am angry. What are you angry about? I'm angry that you're yelling at me. Do you hear me yelling? This is yelling! Have I done that yet? 
Okay, you're using a stern voice. And are you angry. are you defining me? No, I am not defining you. Is she you. defining me? Does she say I'm yelling when I'm not? Yes. Perception is everything. Do you feel like I'm yelling at you? Yes. Yes, why? Because you're using a stern voice. A stern... Honey, <coughs> it isn't my fault you're stupid. Would you like me now, to go get my paper and pencil? I wouldn't like you in any way, shape, or form. Okay, then that's fine. Let's, let's get that understood okay. here. This isn't a matter of whether I like you or not. Repeat after me. One hen. One hand. One hand to... Not hand. Hen. 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 Lay eight eggs. One hen. One hen. One hen, two ducks. One hen, two ducks. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese, four limerick oysters. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese, four hemorrhic oysters. Hemorrhic oysters? I'm sorry. Limerick oysters. Limerick oysters. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese, four limerick oysters, five corpulent porpoises. What? You can remember everything, honey. No, this I isn't don't. hard for you. Go for it. One hen, two <coughs> ducks, three squawking geese, four limerick oysters, five... I forget the other one. Do you wish you had a paper and pencil? No. Do you think you're going to need one if I keep testing you on that? Yes. Then are you going to wish you had a paper and pencil? Yes. Yes. So in the future, what are you going to do when you go to a learning situation? Turn the paper and pencil. And keep it with? Me. You. Did you learn anything? Yes. Do you appreciate what you just learned? Yes. Did you like the way it was taught? No. No. Any of the rest of you ever taught in that fashion? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And did you have to express appreciation for it? Yeah. yeah. Could you learn something from her example? What are you crying about? Sorry. What are you crying about? My feelings were hurt. How were your feelings hurt? Just weird. Should I feel sorry for her? I don't expect you to. Should I feel sorry for her? Some of you are thinking, oh, this is too harsh for this young woman. James Bird, black man in Texas, dragged to death behind a pickup truck by three white males. Matthew Shepard. Matthew Shepard. Young man about your little old, your little younger than you are. Had the misfortune to be born gay. Beaten. Beaten. With a pistol. About the head until they cracked his skull. And then they hung him on a deer fence. And left him there. Overnight. And somebody coming along on a bicycle the next day saw a bunch of clothing hanging on this deer fence and they went over and started to take the clothing off the deer fence and found a body in the clothing. I'm sorry, but those things happen because we live in a society in which people are allowed to treat those who are different in an ugly way because of their differentness. I cannot shed tears for a young white female in this exercise who knows that this is an exercise who knows that it's temporary, who knows that she's getting a college credit, one hour of credit for being here. I'm sorry. I have to save my sympathy and my empathy for those who go through something much worse than this every day of their lives. Tears were coming in my eyes, and when I saw these people crying, I'm like, but it wasn't for them. It was for the fact that I know people who are going through that right now while we were sitting in that classroom and had the privilege and the time and opportunity to be going through an experiment that there are people outside who go through that ten times worse than any student of color in that room. Do you? No. Do you? Yes. Okay, what are they? You're sitting up straight so you've got one already, right? You should look at the person who's talking and sit up straight or have open body posture. Open body posture is crossed legs? No. No, no. Aren't you going to be a good listener then? There, now, this is open body posture. Shouldn't your legs be apart if they're open? <laughs> Not necessarily. I said, hey, I'm here. <laughs> Not necessarily because... Bring it on, a honey. I'm ready right now. Position. Now, does that make sense, yes. what you just said? A crossed body position gives the effect that you are not open to what someone is saying. But when people's body positions... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stop. I'm going to make a sign and hold it up in front of you that says, Stop when you get too wordy. And you just did. 
Do you know the physical aspects of listening skills? Apparently not. Apparently not. Oh, I don't think you do. You certainly don't have an open body posture. Do you know the physical aspects of listening skills? No. No. Do you? No, Miss Ellie. But you got a real open body posture, don't you, darling? I guess so. So you can learn, can't you? Now, getting right along. Your hand is still up. You still didn't learn anything, did you? Didn't I just say when your hand is up, you are thinking of what you're going to say instead of what's being said? Didn't I just say that? Yes, you did. And did you hear that? Yes, I did. And did you decide that you were just going to do it your way? I was Wait a minute. You were on a roll yes, there Yes, I did. Yeah, thank you very yes, much. Yes, I now, did. Now, since you choose to not listen to others, what do you suppose we're going to do where you're concerned? Not listen to me. Thank you very much. Can now, I finish what now, I was saying? No. Because you're still thinking of what you're going to say instead of what I'm saying. Now, getting right along. I heard what you well, were every, saying. You're doing it again. I understand what you were you're saying. You're doing it again. I don't care. You're doing it again. It's wrong. You're you doing it again. Persecuted her for standing you're out. You're doing it again. Persecuted him for standing out. The only change that ever happens is when people stand out and I am sat back down. Martin Luther King Jr. was shot. Are you in any physical <gasps> danger here? Are you in any physical danger here? Is that girl in any physical danger here? Emmett Till was hanged by his neck after he was beaten almost to death simply because he said, made a statement to a white woman. Does he have a reason to be angry? Every time I do the exercise, there is a point at, at which I know I have made the point. And we could stop there, but you have to nail it down. And so it goes on longer than some people think it should, but you have to nail it down. People at this institution... You've made your point, you're right. Yeah, thank you very much. What is my point that I've made? That I, you can't make generalizations about any place because there's racism everywhere. That's right. And while it may be... Uh-uh. <coughs> uh-uh. No. 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 You don't come back in here until you've apologized to every person in this room because you just exercised a freedom that none of these people of color have. When these people of color get tired of, ra of racism, they can't just walk out because there's no place in this country where they aren't going to be exposed to racism. They can't even stay in their own homes and not be exposed to racism if they turn on the television. But you, as a white female, when you get tired of being judged and treated unfairly, on the basis of your eye color, you can walk out that door. And you know it won't happen out there. You exercise the freedom they don't have. If you're going to be in here, you're going to apologize to every black person in this room. And do it now. I'm and sorry. the Latinos. Every there person of color. There's racism in this country. Bullshit. No, you're not going to say, I'm sorry, there's racism. You're going to apologize for what you just did. I will not apologize because... It it's not a matter of race Out. always. Out. 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 Now, is she choosing to leave? Yes. yes. She could apologize and stay. I won't play oh. the wrong game anymore. It ain't gonna hurt her. It's not gonna hurt her to apologize. Yeah, let's talk about that. What's going on in this room alone? Once she leaves it, that's it. It's over with. Okay. It ain't gonna hurt her. Is it gonna hurt her? She, according to action, it is killing. It's killing her. Yeah, it's killing her. It's killing her. But these people, they felt like it was somewhat traumatic. And I'm thinking, how is this so traumatic when they weren't cursed? Nobody was throwing anything at them. They weren't hit. If they were just getting upset over minor stuff that happens to us, on, that happens to us every day, but they don't realize it. One of our students left because she had the right to make the choice whether to stay or go. Students of color do not have the right to make the choice. Her walking out showed frustration, not only of her as a white person, but of many people of color. And I kind of think that, that, that if somebody didn't walk out, that it really wouldn't articulate what we want to do every day. We all want to walk out. We all want to get away from the problem, but we can't. You think she's learning anything in the hall? Probably not. Probably not. Did she choose then not to learn? Yes. Yes, because the learning situation is not one in which she feels comfortable 
or in which she feels secure. So what does she do? Leaves. Things are better than they were when I was 13. They're not as good as they were when I was 50. Now, I want you to take out a clean sheet of paper. Don't tear it out. Just turn over your, turn the page. On the top of the next page on your writing tablet, I want, at the left-hand side, on the top line, I want you to write the words, how they looked. Then, I want you to write three adjectives describing how the people in the other group looked to you during this exercise. Everybody put your eye color, brown or non-brown, at the top of that paper. People in the middle put non-brown. People on the outside put brown. All right, now, leave three lines under your last adjective. Leave three lines and put the words, how I felt, on the next line. How I felt. Read yours. Uh, foolish, apprehensive, sad. Foolish, apprehensive, sad. How many of you were sad? Anybody sad? What were you sad about? Uh, that you would teach this in, in the way, in manner that you chose. That I would teach this in the manner that I chose. Kind then, of like, kind of like uh, fighting fire with fire. Yeah, but that works. When people go through this exercise, I see this happen every time. It's very similar to going through the five stages of grief. First they deny that what I'm saying about them is true. Then they get angry. You've seen that happen? Then they go into the bargaining stage. Then they get depressed. Then they accept it and go along with it. What have you learned, honestly? I've learned a lot of things. I've learned that you can uh, compare the stages of loss to the loss of power. And, uh, does that sound logical to you? Yeah, it does. Yeah, did that, is that what happened in here this morning? Yeah, I'd say so. Is that sick? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, that's sick. And if it's sick in this room with this many students, well, there's this out of here on a daily basis. I feel that you're making an assumption that, that, the, that the biggest hurt is through uh, black and white issues. And that might be true. However, I feel that, that there are those who have gone through a lot of pain and prejudice by not being black it has nothing to do with a race issue but has every other has to do with every other issue and so it seems like you're you're assuming that he has hurt more than i have simply because he his his issue is more prominent than mine and do i know what your issue is no i no definitely. do i know what his issue is you're making the assumption that yes but yes. you don't know his his day-to-day -day. Carrie doesn't want to hear Carrie wants, I think, that Carrie is determined to see this from her own agenda. And no matter how often you tell her, you have choice. People of color have no choice, Carrie. She can change her clothes. She can change her hair. She can change her ornamentation. People of color can't change their color. I think I have experienced enough of my, my own pain to be able to say that on the inside, how different could we really be? And I felt like when I was in the middle group, all of my previous experiences with judgment and prejudice, etc., were being invalidated. Stand up here. Can you stand up? Here? Stand right here. Right, right, right. You stand right here. Now, you folks see any differences here? <laughs> Do you see any differences here? It's a perfectly logical question, do you? What's the first one you notice? What? Sex. Sex. Is sex important to you? Let me put that another way. Let me put that another way. Is it important to you that you're male? Yes. Yes. Why? I uh, feel so strong, powerful. Your gender is important to you? Yes. Do you want to be seen as a male? Yes. Yes. <laughs> ever said to you when I see you I don't see you male <laughs> no has anybody ever said to you when I see you I don't see you black yes yes how many of you see Rasu as black <laughs> did you know you were black before they said so <laughs> is your color important to you very important and your height is important to you yes and why is your color important to you it is who I am it is who you are 
Is it important for you that she sees you as you are, not as just like everybody else? Yes. Yes. When you say to a person of color, when I see you, I don't see you black, I just see everybody the same. People, think about that. You don't have the right to say to a person, I do not see you as you are. I want to see you as I would be more comfortable seeing you. Uh, I wanted to make it clear to the class that the first thing we do see is black and white. Maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's a bad, but it's something that we have to come to and say and agree and just be open with it like, yes, he's black, I see it. Rasul came away with a knowledge of how the power system works. And that's extremely important. And I think with the knowledge that it isn't his imagination. We live in different realities, but when you deny what this person is going through, or what this person is going through, you're denying their reality. We are as different on the inside as we are on the outside, and we have the right to be so. People don't deny differences. Accept them, appreciate them, recognize them, and cherish them. They are extremely important. I think the exercise does indeed make them more aware, and I think it does indeed make them to have them have allow them to have more empathy. I know it does. I think it changes the way they think about themselves and their environment. I think it changes the way they perceive others. I think it changes the way they perceive their own power. The exercise is over. You don't have to worry about your eye color anymore. And some of you still don't have to worry about your skin color. But some of the rest of you do. So I can end this exercise. Or you can say, no, it isn't over for me. I will never forget this, and I will make something better happen because of this exercise. You can choose to do that, or not to. You have that choice. The thing is, you have that choice, and you have that choice, and I have that choice, and you have that choice, and people of color have no choice. They have to fight this battle every day. This is what I choose to do. This is what he has no choice about. going to make a difference here. This is the real world. And when they leave here and go into the so-called real world, I think they're going to carry that decision and that commitment with them. Because once you make a little difference, then that gives you, that encourages you to keep on. I think that I see things completely differently now. I see, I see, I got to experience some of my own strengths and weaknesses. Um, I got to experience some of my sensitivities and at the same time my ability to, to still stand up even though I felt like curling into a ball. At the end I felt like I felt very powerful. Like my roommate has said to me, you know, I've seen a different person in you. That you change a little bit. And like that it is my duty to change society and it is my duty to do what I have to do to make sure that my children don't go through the same shit that I've gone through my whole life. Every experience you have is, is an opportunity to see yourself in a new way. And if you close your mind to that, if you say, I didn't learn anything from this experience, and I say, sucks to be you. When am I going to quit? When racists quit? Do I have a job for a lifetime? I'm afraid so.